How's it going everyone? It is Drew again. We're back with another chapter of Dead Rock, Chapter 11, Deep Cry. And we got another character profile cover for this chapter, that being Saru. Just seeing his outfit here, I'm totally blanking on the name from Fairy Tale, but it is the God Lightning Slayer in Sabretooth, because he wears like the same kind of pants as Saru here. And of course, since he's a monkey, like, of course he likes bananas. No shocker there. So we pick up the chapter actually with Saru, and he's giving the whole Class F a job. This is so giving me fairy tale vibes because, you know, he explains that Dead Rock takes requests from inhabitants of the demon world and, you know, they'll give them the students. And obviously, you know, very similar to fairy tale because they take jobs, you know, from the guild and, you know, go complete them. In the job that they're specifically getting is from an old lady who lives in a deep forest and they're to get rid of some bandits that are within the forest itself. And this actually piques the interest of Zalisha because she actually knows this forest and that there is a seal wizard there, that being Magu. Kind of reminds me of like those toads that are part of the magic council, which Yakuto doesn't know anything about her. And, uh, you know, Zalisha kind of explains that she's super famous and, you know, that they should all know about her. And they potentially have another goal that they can go for here because that wizard could break the seal that is on God's book. And then you get uh, kind of a flashback of them trying to open the book. And I kind of love how this leads into everyone trying to open it in a different way and Yakuto just rejecting it with Frey like wanting to burn it and like Makoto wanting to literally kill the book. Like, oh my goodness, dude. But either way, they weren't able to open the book because it's sealed with a powerful magic. And I wonder if this is actually foreshadowing of what's about to happen to their group. Because, you know, they're about to go off and Saru is like, Hey, if you guys die, I'll come and pick up your bodies. So we go to the Deep Cry Forest and this has got a lot of craziness going on here with some really twisted trees and like snakes on the branches and whatnot and Yakuto is feeling it like okay this is being too convenient because like we need someone to break a seal on this book and we're going to a place that potentially could have someone that could break the seal on this book and Dead Rock literally like set us up for this like, this seems all a little fishy, which, as they're kind of contemplating all that, you get them running into this portal, which apparently is a level gate and just kind of lets you go between all the different levels, which I guess you need a permit pass to use, and they're just kind of wondering why the heck is it in the middle of a forest, and it doesn't even look like this one's in use anymore. But it doesn't really matter because an arrow gets sent their way and absolutely decimates Hein. Which I feel like every time he gets into a battle, he just gets shattered to pieces and is unable to do anything. And from the treetops, there's a ton more arrows that are about to get shot their way. But Makoto steps up and I freaking love this panel with her, you know, summoning all the dead around her. And she's got kind of such a evil look on her face. And she has all the zombies climb up the trees and take out all the bandits, which some of them do jump down. I actually kind of like that uh, Yakuto tells Frey to, you know, not fight in this one. She's like, what the heck, dude? I'm super fired up. I want to fight. And it is the whole reason, like, they're in a forest. If she uses her fire, they, she could set the whole place on fire. So I kind of like that Yakuto is being a lot more mindful than other, you know, protagonist that uh, Mashima has made. I really love seeing Yakuto and Ryzen fighting together. It's giving me mad Grey and Natsu, you know, fighting together vibes. So they end up defeating all the bandits in the area and they're like, okay, we got all of them. Let's go find uh, the person that contracted this job. And it looks like their house is like that way. And as they're pulling up to Magu's house, which looks kind of almost out of like a Mario game because it has like a mushroom coming out of the top of it. Uh, we quite literally get one of the darkest panels I think Mashima has ever made with her literally being strung up on her door, you know, with a freaking nail through her forehead. Like this is one of the most brutal panels I think he's made of like killing someone. And they're like, what the heck? Who killed this lady already? And you know, before they're even kind of contemplating everything, 
you know, as Alicia brings it up, like, hey, Makoto, bring her back to life. You know, we can ask her ourselves. And, you know, just as she's about to do it, the whole building gets smashed to pieces. And that is Bren showing up here. He's there just because he wants to get the little library book back. And, uh, you know, you can't take it from the library. He's uh, come to reclaim his prize. And it turns out that this job was all orchestrated by Bren. He, uh, you know, set this up for them to all come here. He could have easily killed them all at the school, but he didn't want God to find out about this. And I kind of like that this forces all of the class to have to band together like, okay, we have to kill this guy right here, right now, otherwise we're all dead. I like how everyone kind of justifies it now because Makoto's like, oh, I guess we have no choice. And Ryzen's like, dude, I didn't even do anything and I just still get dragged into this stuff. I think I like Frey's reasoning the best, like, well, since the old lady's dead, I don't have to hold back anymore and I can burn this whole forest down. And I like that Yakuto still hasn't forgotten about Hein because he says he's going to avenge him. And Bren's still like, okay, you know what? You guys do not understand. We are called the four demon teachers for a reason. Like we literally have the same power almost as God himself. And he starts transforming into his gigantic form. And uh, the final panel of this chapter is him literally turning into a giant monster that towers way above the trees of this forest and you don't even get to see the class anymore. I think this design is significantly more interesting than obviously his regular form. Um, he is a lot more demon-esque now. With that is the end of the chapter, so my thoughts. With how easily he killed like Hein in the previous chapters and that was just him in his regular form, him being in this demon giant form, uh, I don't know how well they're going to do and I think it actually is setting up what Saru was saying, like if any of you die, um, I will go get your bodies. I almost feel like everyone in the class here is going to die and he's going to go get their bodies and I feel like he's almost going to side with them to where... He has to make it look like he's still a teacher at the school, but he's actually got a side mission of he's going to help them kill God and the other teachers and whatnot. Um, and I think this is going to be a moment where they fail and maybe like secretly get brought back to life so that they could potentially kill the demon teachers and they get kind of like a full sense of security because they think they're dead, but they're actually still alive because we are having the class diminish in members rapidly and uh yeah i don't know how any of them are gonna really win this fight so what are your guys' thoughts on the chapter leave in the comments below thank you for watching and this is drago signing out